Hello everybody, my name is KevGuy378 and welcome back to If My Heart Had Wings. We left off last time uh, telling Agatha that it was too much of a hassle to bother me to text me since I rarely bring my cell phone anywhere. Writing texts on a cell phone is too fiddly, which is a real pain, so I don't really like it. But it looks like Agatha isn't listening to me and has started walking on ahead. Hmm, it seems like an interesting school. It was different to the sports schools or regular schools and had a special kind of atmosphere. Everyone looks like they enjoy it and it's, how should I say, like they come here to hang out. Things they want to do. I don't know. There were a few that seemed interesting though. What do you do, Agaha? Robots? That sounds interesting too. Yeah, I think about it. Huh? Isn't your place round here? Ah, he costanda. No way. Seriously? でっかいショッピングモールができたの。うちの店もそこに入ってるんだよ。また休みの日にでも案内してあげるよ。じゃ、またあしたね。あ、へい。何？Thanks for everything today. No, um, I mean, that you are the same way towards me as in the past. Ah, um. That was a big help. Hehehe, <laughs> あ、見た目もそんなに悪くないよ。極秘情報リークするとね。今日だけでいろんな子から青いの携帯番号を聞かれたし。What?Seriously? Like never happens. Seriously?訂正。スケベになったね、青い。so what? I didn't have that kind of thing at an all-boys school. I got looked happy as she said that. So have you. To be honest, I thought she would have grown up to be more rough and tomboyish. <laughs> Hmm? Aga started smiling quietly. Looking at that innocent smile reminded me of how Agaha was when she was still just a kid. Okaerinasai, Aoi. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Mata ashita kara yoroshiku na, Aipo! Bam! Ouch. She gave me a great big slap on the back. Jane! Agha gave me a big wave and turned the corner. Ouch. You doofus. She might have gotten a little cuter, but she hadn't really changed on the inside. Welcome back, huh? Her attitude hasn't really changed since before. And somehow I felt that it had saved me. Uh, uh, uh. 
After Agatha and I went our separate ways, I did the shopping for dinner on the way back. It's gonna be hot again tomorrow, so I had to give them some food that would give them stamina. Enthusiastically, I put the menu together in my head. Oh no, I forgot to buy milk. There is a convenience store right in front of me. I think I'm gonna bump into Katori, I have a feeling. For five years ago, there was a tobacconist to tobacconist here. It's a little expensive, but I don't have time to go back to the supermarket. I thought to myself. <laughs> wow, I, I was right. The automatic doors opened and the one with the self-proclaimed cool allure left the shop. She had a bag on her lap and she had a smile on her face which was the exact opposite of cool. She didn't notice me and went back in the direction of the dormitory. It's her. She didn't go to school, so what is she doing? I gave up on buying milk and followed Katori. When she got back to the dormitory, Katori opened the front door just slightly. She called Hat from the other side of the door and spoke to him about something. She was sneaking around and seemed really suspicious. The mean boy? Is she talking about me? This is a girl's dormitory, so I'm the only boy here. I don't remember being mean though. I don't know why, but it would appear that she is sneaking around to avoid being found by me. If that's how you feel. I headed for the back door to the dormitory. I hide in the kitchen for now. Shh. If this is about me, tell her I'm not here. I doubt that he got the message, but wiggled his butt as he left the dining hall and headed for the entrance. While I'm waiting in ambush, I'll put the food I bought in the fridge. After a little while... When Kotori came into the dining hall, she went straight for the cupboard and took out a spoon. Without taking out a dish, she stayed seated in her wheelchair. She put the shopping bag from the convenience store on the table. Inside was... Hargan Darch? Needless to say, it was top quality ice cream. Not only that, but it was family size. It's the big pot that cost 2500 yen. She opened the lid and in her right hand she had the type of spoon that you'd eat things like curry with. <laughs> Katori's spoon was still above the smooth surface of the Hargan Darch. Then she dug a big hole in it. One scoop like that would be about 100 yen and she stuffed the whole thing in one mouthful. She brought her hand to her cheek, as though she was flooded in happiness from the bottom of her heart. What is she doing? Seeing what she was doing made hiding and watching her seem pretty ridiculous. Without knowing, I was watching. Vittori began to shovel in more ice cream like a construction machine. Even if it was only a hundred five yen ice cream, you'd savor the flavor more than that. With the next mouthful of ice cream, Katori suddenly lowered her head, holding her temples. Uh, 
ちょっと金ドキただけ。To be able to get brain freeze from eating too much Hargan Darch is the very height of luxury. During this little pause, Katori opened up her notebook. There is something written there. I sneak up a little closer behind her. <laughs> Next to the words. Eat as much Hargan Darch as I want. Katori happily wrote the word done. Is that a bucket list? <laughs> It seemed to be some sort of list. Things I want to do? That was the title, and there were bullet points below. Stroke the head of the big dog in the neighborhood. It's really scary, but it might be unexpectedly friendly. If possible, I'd like to ride around on its back. Fill the bath with water and swim in it like a pool. Pie throwing. And so on. Among those was Go and see Windmill Hill, with Dunn Rin next to it. What is this? Whoa! The toy scream pierced from my right ear and out of my left. I was here before you were. Her mouth was open in shock as she looked at Hat. Well, I guess it's no good sending a duck to scout the place out. Even if he was able to completely grasp what his responsibility was, there's no way he could convey the message. Victoria seemed ashamed and looked away. I'm sorry I surprised you. You were sneaking around, so I wondered what you were doing. I didn't mean to spoil her personal enjoyment. <laughs> I went back to the kitchen to get things ready for dinner. Katori's face seemed to say, Now it only tastes half as good as she sulkily ate the ice cream. Why are you taking time off school? <laughs> She's blatantly lying. Would someone who has caught a cold be eating ice cream? I'm the dorm mother, you know. I have to make sure the boarding students have the right kind of lifestyle. Swoosh! She went to the trouble of turning around so that she could point at me. If you want to call me dorm father, then that's fine by me. Tori turned back around and went back to enjoying her ice cream. If you weren't at school, then where were you? I softened my tone a little as I asked her. Did you go back to the windmill hill? She's ignoring me and eating her ice cream. It has got something to do with me. I don't mean that. Yesterday, if I hadn't been passing by, where would you be right now? Huh? If you're not careful in a place like that, then maybe nobody would have come. If you can't move your wheelchair, what would you have done by yourself? Do you still think it's got nothing to do with me? I'm not accusing her of anything. That's why I tried to speak as gently as possible, so as not to sound too harsh. However, I showed her how serious I was. Why? 
放散症をくらい希少なのよ逆に感謝してほしいくらいだわ And this is where I'm going to end the video to see next, in the next video why I should be the one thanking her. So, everyone, thank you for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and share this video. I would appreciate it so much and it would help a lot. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!